All right, Nick, 2-2. Top nine. First road game of the year. And here we are. Um, this feels like one of those games where if we win, we forget about all the opportunities. If we lose, we're all going to dwell on them. But maybe that's part of the 50 games that we say every year that can go either way, and it depends on what you do in those 50 games. Do you believe in that theory, by the way? You, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I do. I would add, though, Philly's had a lot of missed opportunities, too. They've had two runners picked off, so yeah, both teams could probably say that at the end of the game today. I agree. I think that if they were running their own show, they'd be they'd be pissed about their own set of things. So uh, here we go. Jose Alvarado. Hopefully he continues right. that uh, 27 ERA here. But um, we're not completely lined up yet. I don't know. We'll we'll oh, be close. Oh. oh, you're ahead of me. Oh, <laughs> Ow, that he don't have that much pop. You well, it's just, you, you don't expect to see that off the bat of Espinal. You're kind of like, kind of wishing. All right, we'll time it up after this. Sorry. It's all right. Not not in midseason form. Well. I, I, I you're always you're always like uh, and I, we we continue to say this. How in the hell the local broadcast, the actual cable broadcast, is behind MLB? I mean, that's what you're watching MLB TV, right? Yeah, on uh, Direct TV. I'm seeing the first pitch right now to Ellie. Squares around, bunts. Have you saw I that? I've not seen it. No. Okay. So Wind the win, pitch, uh, bunt, foul. I'll give you the pitch right. clock on the next one. Oh one. Oh, uh, I, ah, they just stopped showing the pitch clock, didn't they, until it gets down. 13, 13 12, 12 man, 11. All right. We're good. We're good. Uh, all right, chat. Let's get some likes. Let's get some likes. This would be a cool time for Ellie to do something really cool. Yeah. They got a lot of lefties in that bullpen. Three of their top five uh, relievers are lefties. Yeah. In order of Val. Well, that's where I don't know. You know, there's always a way to make. There's always a way to complain about David Bell, but it's just like I don't really understand earlier in the game why you wouldn't force them to use one of those guys uh, a little bit earlier. Now, now it's like Fraley. No matter when he comes in, there's just zero chance he's not going to have to face a lefty more than likely, unless they can sneak him in. First, unless they bring a batter. yeah, unless they first three batter thing, but I don't think they're gonna bring a righty in. Period. But I could be wrong. Just we'll find out. How's Ellie? What, what, what was that pitch? I mean, it was a fastball. It was ninety-five miles an hour. It's fastball, just middle away. Swung right through it. Right, let's do this this would the, be the guy. Wouldn't this be something? This would be funny. That was a cutter. Cutter on Ellie, 95. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's do. No. Man, what a pitch. What you think when Diaz came out in the eighth? I was like, oh, I Lord. actually didn't mind it. I listen. I mean, Diaz. Really? Okay. All well, right. yeah, I didn't mind it because I think at some point you got to give Diaz chances. Like you can't just you're not going to hide Diaz forever. So it's like that seems like a pretty decent time to 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 let's let's see what let's see what he's made of, man. I mean, is he going to bounce back or not? Yeah, I. I I'm very much the Phillies are a complete closer by committee. I'm a big fan of that. I just kind of feel like. You're so entrenched at this point. Yeah. Like with Diaz and every time it's backfired. Thank thankfully that tooth plan kinda made it not as dicey. Come on, Stu. Ooh, big guy. I don't hate it. Who's available? Sim, Sims or what? Sims threw some pitches. Um, 
I don't. I, mean, I think just about everyone's available. Yeah. I don't. Did anyone go back to back Saturday and Sunday? No, I don't know. Top of my head. That Ball a boy, Stu. Good job, that Stu. That a boy, Stu. That's a big league at bat. That's a big league at bat. Yes, sir. All right. Maley's look good. All right, Luke. I, I, I wouldn't hate Stu if he tries to steal this bag. Pitch clock violation. Yeah. All right. Give him one back. <laughs> with, with Luke at the plate. Luke's got to be kind of smirking inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you bastard. You better give me one back. It was a legit violation, though. Yeah, yeah, but it's just funny it was with Luke at the plate. No, it was. A little, that's called I've justice. I've never seen him. I've never seen him heated like that. Or I can't remember it. The only problem, the only problem is you might have Benson leading off against a right hander the next inning. That's the ten. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I guess I guess it's the tenth, and you know, you could have Maley bunt. It's not like the end of the world either. So, yeah. I don't know. It's tough. I mean. I would just say with two outs, let's try to get this run in. Would they walk him on? Uh, there he goes. Oh, yes, sir, yeah. Stu. Would they walk him? That's what I'm thinking, though. Like I, nah, not with two strikes. If it was three one, I think you would walk him. And walk the catcher. I I would kind of love that. I I don't really believe in Benson versus lefties, and he hasn't really shown a lot tonight. But you know, Benson would just be eating that would up. Just yeah. be living for that like yeah you're gonna walk the catcher to bring me up come on luke yeah doesn't matter that's a great pitch yeah all right well boom castellanos and scott i mean this Stop. this is this is a good spot for for ds these are right-handed hitters they're not to the first two yeah he's got to throw strikes gotta yep. throw strikes well, oh, maybe, man. Not, maybe not the Castellanos. You, you could throw a few. You could throw a few borderline. Yeah, throw some balls. Yeah, I can already see it now. That'd be one hell of a that'd be one hell of a night on X.com if Castellanos oh, yeah. homers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cancel the show. Yeah, just get off the air. <laughs> Make Evan come on. <laughs> Yeah, he record numbers for Evan. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know, man. Let's ride this one. How was your day, Trace? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, try to get some stuff on X here. All right, there we go. Not bad. Yeah. Well, I thought it was going to be like a real busy day, and then I don't I don't really love the idea of the weather channel being in Cincinnati. I, I, I got to be honest. It looks, it looks like it's going to be terrible, man. So I'm hopeful. Brasco Park canceled tomorrow, so we will do off the bench uh, tomorrow as long as the weather looks like it's going to be okay. Um, yeah, tomorrow from 10 to noon. Nick's on top right. of it. On top right, of I, it. I need a one more. I need a one more. I need a one more. We're ready to go. Yeah. I, I jinxed myself. I'm going to do something. Yeah, else. who knows what's going to happen from now Mike's until then. I'm flying out or something. Right, come on, Diaz. All right, I got to close the chat. We need We need honest reactions to whatever happens here. yeah right the chat will <laughs> lie to you too that's the problem with that's, the chat they tell they don't tell the truth all the there time was someone that told me a stew home run and i thought it was i thought it was someone pulling my leg but then there was this tiny little part and it's like oh, was it really gonna happen come on man <sighs> oh, he's in his and head it's april, and it's april fool's day too so yeah it's a bad day it's just it's just 
no chance of any uh, real news on there. Wow. Make a play. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Boom. Yeah, that got oh. it. That, that got in on him a little bit too, didn't it? About broke his damn bat. Sheesh. Bat died trying to be a hero. All right. <laughs> of all the guys to throw your first pitch strike right down the middle to. Oh, man. <laughs> I was preparing. I was preparing second. for death right there, man. I was about to he seek has, shelter. It's for first time he's thrown a first pitch strike in a year. It's not that was just that was so mean. That was so mean. Like the, just, even the way he dropped the bat right there a little bit, I thought, oh, did he think that he got it? <laughs> oh, come on, Alexis. Nice pitch. Yeah. It feels like Alexis is in that mode right now where he's not really worried about trying to spot pitches. He's just trying to throw it right down the middle. And if it ends up it ends up going right on a corner, it's perfect. But if not, the chances of him actually right, hitting his spot right. are slim to none. Let's go. Let's go. Boom. Nice. Let's go. Let's nice. Go. Good inning. Good clean it. Good clean <laughs> inning. All right. It appears Iowa's going to the final four. Not trying to jinx it, but fellas, you could uh you know come back and lose by two or less, that would be appreciated. What'd you say? I said, if LSU could just come back and lose by two points or less, that would be appreciated to, to some folks out there. Gotcha. Well, I got bad news for you. Well, yeah, it's not over I yet. Am. It's not over yet. I mean, it's not looking good, but it's not over yet. All right. Need as many lights as humanly possible right now. What do we got right now? We got Benson. Yeah, we got uh, Benson, India, India. Steer. So it feels like if there's a lefty, which there will be, I don't know though. I, I'll be honest. I don't. I don't. They're bringing in a righty. Uh, are, are they really? I think he was a red for a minute. Someone can correct me on that. Was he a waiver claim that? Did he did he start the year and I think the Reds might have claimed him in 2022. Maybe that's I'm... a tough spot for David Bell. I guess if the inning gets extended, then maybe you'll make a move. But I you can't you can't you can't pinch hit for for steer. No. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, you're. Yeah, it is what it is. Now you're stuck with what you got. All right, we got the rally hat on now. Let's get it done. <sighs> Just be smart out there. All right, well. Let's roll over a ground ball, Will. I'm letting him swing, by the way. Well, Bubba's on second. Did you see that? Yeah, that's why I said just don't do anything stupid. Put that runner on there. Oh, come on, Will. Put one in a gap. No. Take.
It's only 9.15. Get through. Nope. Oh. Played out perfectly for the Reds, though, for being honest. I mean, this is basically a leadoff yeah, hitter. Take Will. Now this is where this is where if if he were to if he were to get on with a walk, well let's just wait for it. Wow. Uh, I'm watching it. That was a <sighs> terrible charge call. I didn't see. I'm not watching that right now. <laughs> oh man! That Please, miserable. He's going. Oh. oh my gosh! He was safe as safe as safe could be. Can't can't not swing. I'm not. I'm not mad. Man. I'm just. It's just bad luck. It's bad luck, man. That's got you got to have some marbles to pull that off. By the way, stealing with the left-handed hitter up with nobody out in the inning on second base is kind of wild. Just please yeah. don't be an idiot out there. That's all I'm asking. Walk. All right, battling Will. The thing, the thing I love about Will is is he can either come up and first pitch, just swing for the fences and and ambush someone but he also like can just all the time has these six seven eight nine pitch at bats yeah good take good get there get there no 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 did he steal third already yeah he stole on that pitch Oh, okay. he had, he had I, already stole. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. I, I well, I don't want to say I wasn't paying attention. I did not see him in the in the bottom take off. All right. Yeah. He, I think he would have had that even. Well, if they they were giving it unattended. Did you see that? Yeah. Unless well, he unless he took off, he must have seen it and took off. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. He seen it was a fastball. All right. All right, All right India. Let's go. I gotta be honest. Now, do you try to steal second? Are they gonna throw? That's that's what I'm saying. Like, do you want to force yeah. their hand to throw? And will it's not like will is slow. Yeah, you do have real Muto behind the plate. I mean, he's one of the best. Yes, I'm not saying. I'm not saying is it. If I were them, I would throw. There's no doubt. But having said that, it's kind of like an extra innings. You just concede that runner at second, right? Like, you kind of already in your yeah. mind count that as a run. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that play in the first inning, boy. <laughs> Felt like a doomed play, but <sighs> here we are. Oh. Good take. I don't think this guy's feeling it all that well right now. Not, not a lot of command. And then bringing in a righty with so many lefties. Infield in. in. Kind of wild. Infield wow. in. Steal second, please. Steal second. Nope. Damn, he didn't give him that pitch. Close Thank throw. you. That's so stupid by them. I don't. That what, what are they doing? I mean, India grounds into a share of double plays. No, like, yeah, yeah. It's like concede it's, the run at concede the run at third and just assume you're going to get your own run. Now you're. I mean. Oh, dude. You're the Phillies. The Reds have already used their closer. I mean. Yeah, I mean, if I'm the if I'm a Phillies fan, I'm pissed. Yeah. I am pissed if I'm a Phillies fan. You, you turn them loose 3-0? Yes. I, I think I would, too. The way yeah, he's in the mean, bat right it, now, yeah. he's, he's feeling good. Yeah. It's got to be dead nut, you know, fastball yeah. right down the middle. But, yep, yep that ain't it. All right. All right. Come on, Steer. Come on, Steer. Yeah. 
would be wild to bring in Jake Fraley here, though. <laughs> There's you a can't do part it. Of me. I know, I, but you, you can't, can't do, do it. it. You can't. I know. I'm with you. It would be just so disrespectful. Listen, sense. We're lifting. We're, we got to lift the baseball. Okay, we got to lift the baseball. No ground balls, please. Hit the damn thing in the air. They still playing in? Yes. They're gonna try to go. They're gonna try to do some crazy stuff. He didn't call that a strike. This dude's this dude's getting squeezed a little bit. He didn't get a call earlier. That I mean, I'm, I, I know technically that's a ball, but when a guy's searching for it in a bases loaded situation like that, I mean, you you get that call. I. <laughs> All right, here we go. Two zero. This feels like your your Spencer Steer classic. Shoot the ball the other way into the gap. I hope so. I Cassiano's really hope so. It in right field, three run score. If their top guys are left handed, like we've like we've maybe said, maybe they were burned. I, I, I they, they had to the have been because they're bringing in another guy that's right handed. He rolls over a ground ball too. It's going to be hard to. You can get right right through that. Oh, Spencer. Like <laughs> he just I get it. He doesn't want to swing at a bad pitch, but dude, that's that's what we were kind of looking for. Please. Get Please. Out! Go! Get out! Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah, baby! Woo! Fire me up, Spence. That's why you don't hit for him, by the way. You don't even think about it. <laughs> Someone's going to clip that up. <laughs> Let's go. What a swing, man. Oh. That kid is that kid is just a gamer. What a player. What a player. You know what's great? Philly's bullpen came into this game with an ERA of 11 through their first three. And I what think a it swing. Just went up. What a Maybe swing, not. man. Do they count that guy at second base that starts the inning off as an earned run? If no. so, that's okay. It's, that's uh, just like a, it's like a ghost type thing. Yeah, I forget the official term, but... All right, so... Spencer Steer. What a swing. You have moved up. Unbelievable. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. Oh <laughs> he threw two of them. He threw the 2 0. He threw the 2 0 exactly the same way he threw that 2 1. I mean, just. Grooving fastballs. This poor kid. Now I'm starting to feel bad for this guy. He's all over the place. Are they are they leaving him out there to die that. now or no? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is your inning, brother. <laughs> oh, true garrison. Drew Garrison. Oh he bets. Uh, he bets Steer Homer. We got to give that game. back, Drew. I'm giving that back. Next time you go live, I'm gonna figure out where you're at, when it's gonna be. But you're getting that one back. <laughs> this dude is not getting any calls, bro. I mean, I'm just being honest. He's not getting any help. Home plate umpire is not helping him out. Mainly worked him. Haley's grinding him down. <sighs> Who's left in our bullpen? Who's coming in? Sims, I would think. Okay. Just give me somebody that throws strikes. They don't have to be the nastiest guy in the land. Yeah. Is anybody burnt? Is anybody burnt? Cruz Sims is burnt. Through, Sims threw 12 yesterday, sent 34 pitches the last three days. <laughs> Give me some That's, other names. Give me some other names. It's Sims, Antone, and Farmer. Farmer threw 31 bitches nope. yesterday. So it's yeah. got to be Sims. Yeah, it's going to be Sims. 
and they probably didn't want to use him. Well, he's going to be used. He can have the day off tomorrow. Yeah, unless, unless they're, they're, not, just playing, say, they're hey, not playing. They're not playing. They're not playing tomorrow. We're going to go with Antone. They're not playing that's tomorrow, true. and they're that's not playing true. Wednesday. That is true. At least that they is of course. Wednesday. If the weatherman's wrong, I don't know, man. They're acting like this could be really bad. <clears throat> Wednesday Maybe, was supposed to be a day game, though, so it does make it a little bit easier for them to have more leeway to move the game around. John, with the first time. Thank you, John. Appreciate the super chat. First time love. Great hit. That was more than a great hit, John. That was a smash. Let's battle. Let's let's we're not done yet. We got two we got two more outs to get. Let's go. Find a way on, Jay Mir. Okay. Ball girl down the line, right through her legs. Nice play. Real nice play by the ball girl. No, Anton is warming. <laughs> no way, dude. Sims might be completely unavailable. That also might have been why they went to Diaz as early as they did. Jamir just struck out on a 92 mile hour four seam fastball right what if down the middle. Just saying. Sims is unavailable. Man, like you only have Pagan throw nine pitches. Suter only threw three pitches. Is there a chance that is there a chance that Sims is going to warm up if he gets a guy on base? Maybe, but or, then that's your last pitcher, Buck like, Farmer. Oh yeah, Buck Farmer. But Buck threw thirty something pitches. I'm just telling you. Some point, you just you got to you got to you got to got to be a nut cutter. Got a nut. Sims has had a lot time. of injuries though over his career and he's been able to stay healthy for a nice little chunk. And so you got to be careful with him too. It's a three run lead. I know it's four, but I counted it as three. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So that's, it, it looks a lot. With, Alex says you could stay with Diaz. I, where is he? He's at, uh, I don't know, bro. Where we, he's, he's at coming 14, out for the third innings. Pitches. I get that, but it'd be the third inning in a row. He's got to come back out. If the alternative is TJ Antone. <laughs> uh, I'm not disagreeing with you. Justin Beck coming in with this. I hope this helps Trace offset his medical costs from last night. How, how are we doing today? Oh, I'm there. feeling great. I'm feeling great. <laughs> My wife said that I uh, stained the, the, the sheets on the bed. That's on me, though. I didn't really think about that. I probably should have like covered it up, but. But no, I feel great. All right. I got another dunk in me. Let's go. Oh, no. My stream's buffering. Oh, no. You're going to be ahead of me, which is fine. I probably can just fix it. Just reset it after the inning, and we should be in the same spot. Correct. All right. We got to update this box score here. We're professionals. <sighs> This has been too long of an inning. I, I'll tell you what. I am with uh, Tony Tony Combs. Uh, great comment. No Diaz. Too long of an inning. Way too cold. I agree. I 100% I agree. It's been yeah. a really long inning. And it's getting longer. Yeah, you're right. You, you probably don't want to get cute. I I hear you. Espinal. He's battling, though. Is, uh, he, does he have a hit this year? Yeah, you got a hit in his very first at-bat. Mm, didn't see it. But... It, Talking through this, I mean, if TJ Ato can't come in with a four-run lead, then he has no business being on this roster. Correct, yeah. I mean, which, he, which I think that I think uh, I think it's fair to say that he might not be. He might not be. Uh, you wanted him not. You wanted this to be uh, Santillian. So yeah, yeah. Oh, now we're gonna go to the bullpen, probably because the dude's throwing like sixty pitches. To be fair, yeah, yeah. Let's get let's get another another couple runs though. Get a little Ellie two run bomb. Mark Fetters with the five dollars super saying Spencer Steer in all caps. Yeah, massive, massive, massive hit. How about 
How about Alexis Diaz? He got all all five batters out that he faced. I mean, he was an All Star last year. He he's been on pretty good before. Pitches, on fourteen pitches, man, that's he's been uh, pretty good before. I wouldn't say the pitch that he threw Castellanos was great. Got yeah, away, got away with that's it. True. I mean, it's a fastball we right down the middle. Tonight, uh, <laughs> yeah. Castellanos didn't miss that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Pepper Westwood said that first inning feels like last year now, huh? It does a little That's bit. That's true. So it's crazy about these these post game shows. It's crazy about the game of baseball. Is it just depends on what happens throughout the game, towards the end of the game. Some things are made a big deal, and some things aren't. That I will we'll obviously talk about it, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That was a tough. That was just a tough situation all the way around. I'm glad to see Miami Valley Gaming, no free ads, goes all out on their ads. I mean, these these actors, they get have to be high dollar. It's been a long inning, man. How long, how long has this inning been? It's been a 31, 32 minute inning. That's, that's wild. Let's go, Ellie. Was that, did it, my brain's just not there anymore, but Ellie got Ellie got out last inning, correct? Yes, I think he was the second out. Yeah, no, Maley was the last out. He was the second out, though. Oh yeah, yeah, it was Stu. Stu walked. Gosh, he's just missing pitches. It's a hanging slider. Please, Ellie. Get on base. Are we allowed to say, guys, we're not allowed to complain about the umpires not giving us calls the next game? <laughs> All right? This is one of these umpire scorecards you just scroll past. Never saw yeah, it. Yeah, i never seen it. <laughs> never saw that bad boy. <laughs> Move along. Right. This is, this is the opposite of the umpire scorecard lookup. Mute that account. Please, Ellie. Ah, uh, uh, you know before me, I forgot. Like the same pitch. All right. Let's Ellie, I need you. Game. I need you. I need you to play defense, Ellie. I don't know if he's still arguing, but get out of there. Definitely How far did that ball get out? By the way. Yeah, we need likes. Need likes. Uh, I'm need actually, them. Need them. I'm actually uh, updating a certain graphic. Won't won't jinx it. Uh, 104.4.383. So 104.4 off the bat, 383 feet. With a launch angle of 26, if you were wondering at home. <sighs> By the way, for those that are... In the chat, I mean, Ellie already struck out on a pitch before that. That was probably a strike. And the fact is, let's all agree that that, that pitch is close enough to be called a strike anyways. Regardless, it's super, super close. These guys are your, uh, these guys broadcast? are human. what I do? Did you reset your broadcast? Oh, no. Hold on. I'll do that now. Yeah. Reset. I got a, I got a, uh, what do I have here? Columbus Blue Blue Jackets ad now. That's, that's where I'm at. Are you getting audio coming from a TV behind me or no? Chat. Let me know. 
I have mine on. I just usually listen in and then mute it when we uh, do the uh, the actual show. For those that are wondering if we talked about anything yet, we've not talked about anything yet. We're not going to talk about anything until this game's over. Um, those are just the rules. I didn't make them up. Those are just the rules. We don't really get into topics. We don't talk about much until the show starts. That's why we have the show afterwards. There's going to be somebody inevitably that that's going to tell us tomorrow in the YouTube chat that we shouldn't uh, we should start the shows faster or something like that. Yeah. We put chapters on YouTube, so we'll probably do that song and dance again. But when you go back to watch these shows, if you don't see them live, we do put a chapter on when we watch the ninth inning. Obviously, it's the start of the show, and then we put when we actually start the show on there as well. So you just have to click the drop down, click on the timestamp, and here we. Go. CJ Antone, number 70, with a full head of hair. Oh, gosh. I'm going to try to be positive, Nick. Just just need three outs before you give a four runs. That's, that's the goal here. Yeah, I mean, listen, if we throw strikes, I'm not trying to jinx it, but if we throw strikes, I feel great. Great. The only way we, we get in trouble is just not throwing ball over the plate. Oh, yeah, swing at it. That a boy. They've helped him out a few times tonight. Hi, what, what are we doing? I mean, uh, goes back to that whole like sometimes you should just straight up take against some of these relievers. Uh, uh, just throw a strike, please, brother. I just don't get it, man. I mean, Major League Baseball. It's Major League Baseball. You got a four-run lead, and you just can't throw the thing over the plate. Number eight hitter. Just throw fastballs right down the only, middle. Only in there only in there to face a left-handed starter. Do you realize the statistical chances of them actually getting the, the amount of hits they need if you threw fastballs right down the middle over and over again yeah. is just incredibly low. They're, they're going to hit balls right at guys. Something's going to happen. Just keep throwing breaking balls. I, I don't have I don't have I don't I don't have this in me tonight. I gotta be honest. I don't have this in me tonight. I can't do this. If this is where this is gonna go, I can't do it, Nick. This show the show's gonna get real toxic. There we go. There we go. Just throw it again. Fastball's right down the middle. Who's throwing? Buck, Buck Farmer. Does that make you feel good? That's a ninety-three mile an hour fastball. Nice catch by the by the man in, in the bleachers there. Gonna have to hand it to one of those kids. Maybe not. Looks like an OG. F them kids, he said. Let's not get cute. Let's just throw that fastball again. It's not fooling anybody. You think? If Tyler Stevenson calls another curveball or whatever the hell you can call that thing, I don't care what we call it, but if I'm, I'm not going to be happy with him. Like, I, I get that it sounds ridiculous to throw fastballs every single time, but there's just I, it's just no chance to get that many hits. There you go. Keep throwing them. No. By the way, Marsh... What does he put in his hair, man? Like, every time I see this guy, he looks like the grungiest, grossest, rat-filled-looking hairdo I've ever seen. Fastball, please. Okay, this guy is... This guy's got the... This guy is literally... This guy's got the game. Hey, chat. 
<laughs> not one more time are we allowed to complain about the home plate umpire ever. Like we're not allowed to do it for a week. Okay, we're in a week. We got a week probation on the on the whole home plate umpire thing. We don't get to talk about the home plate umpire at all. Also, I can't He's wait for all the Tyler Stevens. Line. He does. I can't wait for the Tyler Stevens and Stamps to come in and say he framed that pitch. <laughs> Just get an out. Just get an out. That's two outs. Hell yeah. I love the Phillies coming out swinging, by the way. Heck, yeah, first pitch. Ambush this guy. Let's get on him. Oh, man. I need one more topic for J-Bar number two. Oh gosh, what do you want? What do you want it to be? I don't even know what you got on there. This umpire is atrocious. This umpire is uh, so bad. Because we don't have reds on my LB. Um, I got CES help the runner. Oh uh, man, I need one more. Chat, give me a topic. Chat questions. <laughs> Just put whatever you want on there, Nick. All right, TBD if you need to. DVD. <laughs> Put Trace on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Something will come up. All right. Hey, we need one more strike. One Let's more ride. strike. Let's go. Let's rally. Let's ride. Come on. Likes, chat. You guys have been amazing in here. You've been grinding away. We've been grinding away. I'm so hot right now. By the way, I've been wearing this hood for way too long. I need to get it off. The long sleeves are, are, are really rough when you have an extra inning game. I have long sleeves on, too. Is TJ going to get cute here and throw another breaking ball, or are we going to just have a fastball again? I think we're going back to the old heater. <laughs> he knew he couldn't get away with that one. He thought about it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> That'll be real dicey. <laughs> yeah. He's going to get called by the MLB offices. <laughs> oh. 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 This dude can't pitch. Can't field his position. Yeah. That was tough. That was tough. You're going to call that one tough? All right. I mean, Nick's trying to give him a pass, everybody. Let's watch it in real time. It was all right, I guess. It hit off his heel of his glove. I like the slide, though. If he lets it go, it's an out by the infield, middle infielders, but... I got to close the chat. How about this? You can put you can put this on the last one. Antone. Okay. <laughs> Just Antone. That's all you need to put. Antone, I'm going to put a period. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> Don't show those numbers. Yeah, Don't I know. It's 0 for 10. Oh, I give no. up. Oh, no. Don't do it, Bally. I can't believe that, that Anton is the guy they turned to in this spot anyways. Gosh, dude. This this tenth inning's been longer than some games we've watched. I just got an MLB notification. I gotta be honest with you, it scared the heck out of me. It said some guy in Blue Jays is throwing a no hitter, but I thought it was getting ready to say that I thought it was getting ready to say that Bryce Harper. Did you see you can delay that by thirty seconds? Yeah, I did. That was cool. I don't. I don't have notifications on. I just turned them off. Please, TJ, just get lucky. Are we allowed to get lucky? Nice pitch. That was a good pitch. Is it crazy? Is it crazy to think? Is it crazy to think that old boy has only given up the one ghost runner run? Like that. That seems wild. <laughs> yeah. 
Like the, this guy, <laughs> if he gets this out, knock on wood here, he, he literally didn't even give up a run. I can't, in a real baseball game, which is just a little absurd. Please, TJ. Bryce Harper looks like a construction worker. Let's go! <laughs> oh my gosh, boys and girls and children of all ages. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do any more of those. I'm not built for 162, but you know what time it is. It's time to do a show. And we won, which means one thing. It's the full intro. Goodness, look at this kid run. My, oh my, that is a triple. Matt McClain's first big league bomb. Spencer Steer's first big league hit is a home run to straightaway center field. Joey Votto's done it again. The pitch. Votto swings high in the air. Right field. Yes! He pointed to the dugout to say, I told you. That is Joey Votto's 315th career. Go ahead, Revy. Only Johnny Bench had more as a red. And I can't tell you how much it means to play in front of everyone here in Cincinnati as a red. Uh, what a gift. What a tremendous gift. So thank you. Thank you. I think I can speak for all of Red's country. Joey Votto, thank you. High drive, left center feet, racing back to the line, Bourgeois. The Reds are National League Central Division champions. In the air, left center feet. Diddy, Diddy, he did. He did. He did. Reds win. Reds win. I don't know what's going on i'm not sure what's going on all i know is that was a heart attack game there's a lot of things to talk about it's a winning edition of chatterbox reds which means one thing i ran i went and i looked for a pilsner i gotta be honest with you i got a little spooked 
So it's going to have to do tonight. But here's the thing. I didn't come empty-handed. <laughs> Let's go. That's the first one of the year. And by God, Spencer Steer is a great at baseball player. He's a great at, he's a great at the baseball game, as some would say. Nick, I'd ask you how you're feeling, but we just spent 45 minutes on air. Uh, the longest inning that we've ever done on Chatterbox Reds. So we got to talk a lot. And uh, I'd ask you how you're doing, but I assume you're doing great. Reds win 6-3. Um, you, you you got anything to celebrate with? Uh, I've got a uh, rain clean energy, nice. baby. No yep. free ads. Love that. No Let's free go. ads. No free ads. All right, Nick. Um, it's always it's always lovely to kind of go in and and take a game where you felt like at parts of it you didn't think that it was going to go your way. Started off in the first inning. I'm sure we'll get into all of it where the vibes were down a little bit, and then uh, they take a lead. The Phillies take a t- take a lead. And then ultimately, uh, Reds come back. But the beautiful thing is, is we do a box score recap. I don't know how you're going to keep up with it today. But uh, I'll let you run through it. And as always, we will get into it. For those that are just joining us for the very first time, thank you. But here comes the box score recap presented by Nick Kirby. All right. Top of the first, Jonathan India smoked a triple to right field. Spencer Steer hit a weak fly ball. India tagged and ran home. He didn't slide. Was ruled safe originally. Phillies challenged and won. Christian Encarnacion Strand, who was in the on-deck circle, was nowhere to be found on the replay to help India and tell him to get down. Felt like a big missed opportunity early. And then it really compounded because in the bottom of the first, Kyle Schwarber led off with a weak single to center field off Andrew Abbott making his season debut. Abbott then walked Trey Turner, struck out Bryce Harper, and then he got a line out from JT Realmuto. But then Alec Bohm hit a changeup about a foot off the plate a whopping 67 and a half miles an hour down the right field line past the shifted Christian Encarnacion strand who traces the light to nothing. Phillies felt like for a second straight day, just not the Reds day, but Andrew Abbott, he really battled uh, really an outstanding performance. We'll talk more about him in a minute. Ended the day five and a third, three hits, two runs, two walks, four strikeouts, and uh, kept the Reds in this ball game. Still 2-0 in the top of the sixth as uh, Philly starter Christian Sanchez was dealing eight strikeouts through five innings, but India had a leadoff walk. Spencer Steer doubled, and that chased Sanchez from the ballgame. In came in former Red Jeff Hoffman, and Christian Encarnacion Strand met him with a single, making it a 2-1 ball game. Then Jamer Candelario, he's getting hot. He's singled to make it 2-2. David Bell elected to let Santiago Espinal hit against a right-handed pitcher, he grounded out when Trey Turner made a nice play, getting uh, CES's only play at third base. Ellie and Stu struck out to end that threat. Uh, Reds' bullpen uh, was really solid today. Emilio Pagan and Justin Wilson got through the sixth and the seventh innings. Brett Suter struggled in the eighth, only threw three, pitch, three pitches, didn't get anyone out. Alexis Diaz uh, came to the inning, um, and he was able to get out of that inning thanks to a toot plan from the Phillies base runner. Alexis Diaz would go on to retire all five batters he faced, coming in much earlier than expected in this one. And we went into extra innings. And in extra innings, Phillies relief pitcher Connor Brogdon just unfortunately did not have it. He couldn't find the zone. Benson and India walked to load the bases. And then Spencer Steer made him pay, hit a grand slam to left field, 104 off the bat, 6-2 Reds. TJ Anton, just a little shaky in the bottom of the 10th, but found a way to get it done. Reds win 6-3. Trace, your Cincinnati Reds are 3-1 and one after they looked like they were about to be 1-2 and two about 30 hours ago. And if you haven't heard me talk enough, we're going to go to our deep drive of the day, sponsored by Deep South Commodities. And, of course, it was Spencer Steer's Grand Slam. 104.4 off the bat, 383 feet. Increased the Reds' win probability by 25%, up to 96.2%. And uh, our deep drive of the day, sponsored by DSC Commodities. DSC is a leader in renewable commodities for biofuel production, specializing in used cooking oil collection, aggregation, and sales. Visit www.deepsouthcommodities.com for more information. Thanks, as always, to our friends at DSC. All right, let's get into it. Um, I, I would... I would uh... First and foremost, I want to let everybody know likes equals wins. If you're new here, uh, it's a scientific fact that if the more likes we obtain, better chance the Reds win tomorrow. It sounds like it might rain tomorrow, though, in Philadelphia, so we'll see if they play, but that's here nor there. 
I don't know. You got Spencer Steer on the rundown first. I guess that's where we start. I'm uh, I'm just trying to reel back in my brain. I had all these excellent points I was going to make. All these things I had seen throughout the game that it's like, oh, this, you know, the small things they add up, Nick, the small things they add up. We had this thing happen here, this thing happened there, and then now I'm just sitting here and I'm, my my brain is straight pudding and I can't remember exactly what happened. So, Spencer Steer, top of the mind, top top of the reason as to why maybe the Reds are, are, are continuing to find ways to win. And we were told, Nick, we were told by some baseball by some by some baseball knowers that Spencer Steer was probably the most likely guy to regress. And the fact of the matter is, is this guy looks like a big league hitter. He's comfortable at the plate. He sees the ball well. He lets the ball travel, hits it the other way. And he, and he, you know what? I was a little upset at him on that 2-0 pitch because I thought that, you know what? You're getting ready to get a cookie right down the middle. Be ready to hit it. He was patient. He was patient, and rightfully so. He got the same cookie the very next pitch, and he deposited it in the left field bleachers. And uh, let's face it, this team offensively can hit right-handed pitching. It just can. And the question is, is can it hit left-handed pitching? I don't know where they go to try to figure that all out, but we'll find out another day. Today's not the day to figure that out now. But uh, your overall thoughts, I guess, just on on Spencer as a whole, and then uh, we'll get into Andrew Abbott and kind of go down the chronological order, if you will, of this baseball game. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, really good at-bats by Benson and India just to, to get to that situation. Uh, India was a little easier because the guy was all over the place. Benson actually yeah. really battled in, in his at-bat. Um, I, I think he fouled off a couple pitches, 3-2, yeah. if, if memory serves me. India, uh, it, it was in, India, India-esque. I wouldn't give it as good of an at-bat as India's the other night, but it was India-esque, right? He, he, he laid off some yeah. good pitches, fouled some tough pitches off, but yes, he did. Yeah, and you know, you you come up with the bases loaded with a guy struggling with command, you make him throw a strike, and then you take your biggest hack on a on what you're expecting, the fastball down the middle, and and steer made him pay. And uh, just what a what a wild turn of events over the last like 30 hours. Like I said, I mean, look like the Reds were well on their way to one and two, and now you're, now you're three and one at least for for a couple days. No matter what, you you've avoided the bad start to the season, the dreaded bad start that's kind of plagued this franchise for ever um so at least you kind of got that out of the way you're off to a good start um and uh, we'll see the rest of the series i know the rain's going to be a big storyline but if somehow all the games are played you are staring at zach wheeler in game three so you at least got one win and it just when you win that first game on the road trace i, I would like to hear your thoughts on this it just it feels so monumental, even more so than like these first wins at home. It just, you, especially when you're facing a team that's a playoff caliber team like the Phillies. Yeah, I think there was a lot of boxes that got checked tonight. Um, not to transition into the next point, but let's just do it because I think that I think to your point, there it, 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 it's not so much that they got the win; it's the way they it's the way in which they continue to find ways to win. And Andrew Abbott, he's a guy that we had talked about. He's on the cut line. To be a starter. Let's face the facts. If he went out today, gave up six runs in the first inning, got pulled out after you know, call it you know, two thirds of an uh, of an of a game, didn't even get through a full inning. You could make the case that he might not even get a chance to to get another start in the big leagues. Obviously, that's not going to be the case now. He threw the ball incredibly well. I know that everyone's going to everyone's going to point back. Oh, he threw the ball great ex- outside that first inning. I mean, the first inning he threw the ball okay too. You know, I mean, he he, he got. He got a little loose. Maybe there was some nerves there. He's throwing in Philadelphia, by the way. I just want to—I do want to remind everybody—he's not throwing at home, and he's not throwing against the Washington Nationals. With all due respect to the Nationals, but we all know they're basically—it's a kid show, but they're turds. Okay, those guys are not very good. The Phillies are the fields. The Phillies are the real deal. I mean, they got guys up and down this lineup that 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 can play, and there's some nerves there, but. I'm not going to go deep and, and labor this point a bunch. And, and, I, and I know that, again, at some point, the analytics will play out, and I'm sure that the shift will make sense. But the guy, the guy gets a, a guy that hits the ball at the end of the cap. It rolls down the first base line. And unfortunately, it's 67 miles an hour off the bat, and that leads to two runs. Again, what it could have should is all over the place. But he throws shutout baseball if it wasn't for that. So Andrew Abbott looked great. He stays in the rotation. I think that means Nick Martinez moved down. I really do. I, 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 especially after what we've seen tonight. And that's my point, Nick. 
That's 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 my bigger point to this. Is it has little to do with how well Nick Martinez can actually start games. It's that we're going to TJ Antone, which I know we'll get to later in the game, but we're going to TJ Antone with a four run lead, and we're all collectively in the chat pissed off about it, or we're we're worried about it. Now, that doesn't bode a lot of confidence for me. Just saying. Um, and then and then they got a guy at Buck Farmer going to come in. That, now I, I talk about solace a lot. That doesn't give me a lot of solace knowing that Buck Farmer's backing up TJ Antone. That's like the blind leading the blind. That's like letting the lion guard the sheep. Not a very good idea. Just saying. Um, all right, back to Andrew uh, Andrew Abbott. Final thoughts on him from me is I think that he looked like he did last year before he ran into what we'll call arm fatigue. I think that's the excuse we're using for his poor pitching down the stretch. Yeah, that's a great lineup. I mean, the Phillies lineup is literally meant to hit. They're not meant to defend. They are a lineup stacked of dudes that can all hit. Um, and especially there's a lot of really tough uh, uh, right-handed bats that, that crush lefties. This was a really brutal first start of the year for him. I thought he threw the ball excellent. Only gave up four hard-hit balls the entire night. You might remember last year, even when he was cruising early on, he would still give up six, seven, eight hard-hit balls. Some of so I, I do think fatigue was a massive part of his second half regression, but I also think some of it was also just natural regression. I do think he kind of overpitched early, yeah. Kind of got some, some starts where he he got through giving up um some really hard hit balls. But tonight you couldn't have you couldn't have asked you couldn't have I couldn't have dreamt of a better start really for Andrew Abbott in this spot, his first start of the year. Uh, threw ninety pitches and it, it felt like he never really even broke a sweat outside of that first inning. No. I mean, he's got a little bit of a beer gut, though, for being honest. I don't know if you've seen it, Nick, but it's an interesting thought. I, 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 muscle. It's muscle. Is that what we're calling that? Yeah, yeah. Muscle? All right. We're yeah. going to call it muscle. Adam, I mean, I'll call it muscle, Adam, too. Adam. I can already see I can already see Andrew Abbott sitting on his front porch in the rocking chair drinking his black coffee at like 4 a.m. when he's watching the sunrise every morning in some some random country village. Uh, that's probably what, what Andrew Abbott will be doing here in about 35, 40 years based off of his appearance right now as a big leaguer, but that's here nor there. Alexis Diaz, uh, we'll get into him really quickly. I don't have a whole lot to say. He's, he's, he's a decent arm. Let's not act like he's the world's worst arm. The question is, is whether or not he can stand up to pressure and can throw strikes uh, when it means the most. They brought him in in a unique situation. It wasn't a closing situation, and let's face it, uh, I think even Reds Daily last year posted this, that... We all assumed that Alexis Diaz didn't throw the ball well in non-save situations, but his numbers actually say different. But it did feel that way for a long time, that if you, bought, if you brought Diaz into a non-save situation, he wouldn't throw the ball all that well. He did tonight, got a bunch of outs. Kudos to Alexis Diaz for bouncing back and being a big part of the reason as to why they won this game. Yeah, five outs. I mean, we, we did talk, we were watching live... A little bit of a, a, a bad first pitch to Nick Castellanos, but yeah. again, I'm not really going to crush Alexis Diaz for throwing strikes uh, no. after you know some of the outings we saw, but this was a spot that he's never succeeded in. It feels like every time he's come in in the eighth inning, he's it's it's failed. Like, um, but uh, yeah, he got the job done today. This is kind of just a, 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 a kind of game where you kind of check off the box. Okay, we were concerned about Edge Rabbit. Okay, he, he he made us feel better. Alex Diaz, all right, he made us feel better. And you can kind of uh, go down the list of uh, of guys today. We'll talk about India in a second. He's been doing that all four games. But, right. um, yeah, this was a big, big outing for Alexis Diaz. And especially when you add the fact that Alexis Diaz had to have known this too. We did not know this at the time. But it was pretty clear that Lucas Sims was unavailable. So Alexis Diaz has to know that. And he picked up the slack knowing, hey, I got to cover Lucas's innings tonight because Lucas, I think, had thrown like 37 pitches um, all re- over the last three days, which is quite a bit for yeah. a guy that's had some some shoulder injuries and stuff in the past. And Alexis Diaz picked uh, Sims up and picked his team up tonight. I think David Bell's trying to be probably extra mindful this year of the way in which he handles his bullpen based off the way that it's gone in, in years past, and especially last yeah. year. I mean, last year, I don't I don't think there's really any two ways about it. They got tired towards the end of the year, and they were used a lot, a lot, and it, and it, and it showed. So we'll see, if, uh, we'll see if Bell decides to kind of manage that a little bit differently this year, give guys days off when we feel like we need him. And to your point, uh, I don't know what's on the next rundown here, but to your point, we'll talk about Antone in a bit, but if you, if you have someone in the bullpen – and you don't feel confident enough to bring them in with a four-run lead. Now I get it's a little bit of a fake four-run lead with the ghost runner on second base and extra inning. So let's just call it a three-run lead. 
If you can't get three outs and not give up three runs on a consistent basis, you probably shouldn't be in the big leagues, which is probably a debate we'll get into in just a minute. All right, we have a significant amount of people in here. I don't know. I, I, sometimes I wonder when I look over there, I'm like, is, is there a glitch in YouTube? I don't know. I just want to say thank you to everybody that, that, that watches this show, supports us, and and tells friends about it because I think that's the only way that this all thing grows. I mean, it just we don't put we don't have enough money, quite frankly, to market this. We're not putting it on billboards. We're not going, you know, running ads or whatever it may be. So it's all of you. You're the ones that make this possible. Thank you very, very much. If you couldn't, uh, if you don't mind, leave a like. Uh, I'll just say this right now. Uh, I will get two tickets. Yesterday, I said I would fund anybody that guessed the score exactly correct. I'll go through that. I'll buy memberships for anybody that that get the game right. Today, in the comments, if you... Now, this is unique because I think that the game's going to get rained out tomorrow. But if it doesn't, then we'll count it. But this isn't a gotcha type thing. Okay, this isn't a gotcha type thing. The next time the Reds play. So if it's not tomorrow, there's not going to be some stupid little asterisk thing that they do at corporate stores, you know, where they got the little the little uh, bait and switch tactic. Once they get you in, you think it's half off when you get to the register and it's not half off because of some, some ide- idiotic thing that they come up with. So here's the deal. I will get anybody that guesses the score right in the comments after the show's over. You got to do it when the show's over and the comments stay there. Not in the live chat. I know that there's going to be some people that are going to try to be funny in the live chat, and they're going to be like, oh, let's post the score and try to confuse the guys and make them think that we don't know. I've caught on to you. So anybody that can guess the score is going to get two tickets, and where am I going to get those tickets? I'm going to get them on the Game Time app. Why the Game Time app? Largely because it's the best ticketing app that there is. Easy, efficient, quick, straight to the point. Two clicks, that's all it takes. Literally two clicks, and you can have tickets. You can see where your tickets are. You can see the seat what it looks like from the seat, and you can click on the all-in pricing button at the top of the screen like I do because I don't like the fee stuff. I know that the fees are already built in. I'm not an idiot, okay? But I just want to see it before I get to the checkout. But use the Game Time app. Use the promo code CINCY, that's C-I-N-C-Y, on your very first purchase, and you can get $20 off uh, on your tickets. So please use the Game Time app. Okay, let's get into it. CES and the runner thing, all right? I, 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 I'm I, still a little fired up about it. I, if they would have lost this game, I would have been full-on pissed, if we're being honest. I'm still a little upset. David Bell's giving his interview right now. He's talking to the microphone. He's just like, this is a really good team we got here. You know, we uh, we don't give up. We're going to battle till the very end. And, you know, these guys are just they're just gamers, you know. I'm really proud to be their manager. Uh, that's what he's doing right now on the, uh, on the uh, post game. if you want to tune into that. But anyway, CES... I know CES needs to help the runner, Nick. I can I give shared blame. You know, sometimes when you when you when you when you when you have a divorce, sometimes it is one person's fault. But sometimes it's kind of both. I think it's both both parties' fault here. Jonathan India was staring right at the ball. The third base coach, in my opinion, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna this is my opinion, of course, of all the years that I've grown up around baseball at a higher level. If you can see the outfield and you can see the play, it's your decision. You you know your body, you know your speed, you know all that better than you. The third base coach can chime in, like be aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive. Or the chi- they can chime in and yell, no, 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 no. But ultimately, it's your decision as a major league player whether you're going to go or not. And I think India, he made, I don't want to say he made the wrong decision. But he made a questionable decision. He still was safe. And then he made the questionable decision of just not assuming that there was going to be a play at the plate. So I give India some blame. But you're also right, Nick, because I seen your I seen your post. CES needs to be there to help. Like this, it goes both ways, man. We need we just need to be better there. That's what I that's that's my whole synopsis on that situation. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's more CES. I mean, there there's also I think the one thing people say, well, the the it was a shallow fly ball. Well, the center fielder can also airmail the throw. So when I, I don't know what CES was doing, but clearly he wasn't, you know, saying get down and slide. So when he's coming in, he, it's just an instinct thing. He's he's running and he was running hard all the way home. So when he sees nothing there, he's thinking, oh, maybe airmail the throw or whatever. Sure, he probably should, so should have slide, but it feels like the crossing guard uh, not, not informing the people that there's a, a, a car coming in. Okay. Yeah, sure. They should have looked up, but come on, your job is to be the freaking crossing guard. Let the guy know, get down, slide, make it simple for Jonathan India, who, who Jonathan India hustled for a triple was trying to hustle and get a, a run on the board. It's more on CES, but good. But look at this. This is how I would sum this up. I don't think this ever happens again. This is one of these things. CES knows. Hey, I'm not letting that happen again because I'm sure you heard about it. Um, and it's just look, it's one of these. 
things is going to happen with a young team. Thankfully for the Reds, it didn't cost them tonight to see yes's credit. He had two hits. He had a good night to India's credit. He had a great night all throughout and they, they picked themselves up. And at the end of the day, you wash your hands. It's all good, but you do have to be better. Yeah, I mean, listen, if they lose this game, that's probably the number one talking point on some people's discussion boards yeah. is this is this play. It was a run. It was one in which, again, I, I would actually say of all the things that I questioned more than anything was the decision that he decided to go. I You have, you have nobody out in the inning. You have the heart of your lineup up. Ultimately, I know that it doesn't automatically mean that when one thing happens, the next thing's 100% going to happen after that. And what I mean by that is, I, the very next hitter coming up was CES. He gets a hit. And ultimately, he would have scored anyways. I don't know. I don't know if I would have gone there. But to his credit, he made the right decision because ultimately, if he would have slid, he would have been safe. And you could argue that CES was the reason why he did not slide. But uh, but but that's that. It, it, to the, again, I don't know if India had the scouting report. I'm assuming he probably did. Um, I'm assuming J.R. House of the scouting report, but Brandon Marsh has a terrible arm. He rates as one of the uh, the the lower rated arm values according to Statcast over several years of data. Made a great throw in that one, like you would never believe it. But um, right. I, I, the, the scouting report says run. So um, and if he would have slid, he would have beat it. So it's hard to really be all that mad. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a learning experience. You move on. Thankfully, it didn't bite them tonight. All right, uh, some supers really quick. Mark Fetters, again, I, Spencer Steer. I think I already said that before, but it's just right there in front of my face, all caps, Spencer Steer. Shout out, Spencer. Big time hit. Um, smash, Grand Slam. David Brock says, let's go Reds. Appreciate you. Mark Fetters with another one says, LFG Reds. It's a kid show, so I appreciate that, Mark. Uh, if you don't know what LFG means, then, then that means you're a kid. Um, Big C, the Viking Helmet guy says, Trace, cheers to a Coke First Coke day at Skyline, by the way, I don't, I don't support that. Got to be honest, don't support the Skyline uh, Coke thing. But uh, he did say, also, 500 live viewers, let's go, boys. Well deserving. I don't know I don't know what's going on right now, but we have a record crowd in here tonight. I just want to say thank you again. Like the stream if you've not already. Continue to tell people about it. We're here every single night. We're, we're idiots. We're here every single night. Um, and, yeah, we have fun every single night. There's going to probably be nights, like probably tonight, if the Reds lose, we're going to be here. We're going to be arguing about some things. Um, and hopefully we have some reasonable baseball discussions along the way. Who's your daddy, though? I don't know if you know this, Nick, but you've been kind of getting some people in the chat that are suggesting that you might be on uh, You might be on some um, kids' show. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it at that. But anyway, he said, uh, spark some grass, Kirby. That's what he said. So I don't think you've ever done it, but you might want to try at some point. Um this is just the Reds are three and one, baby. I mean, if That's you right. can't be excited about the Cincinnati Reds being three and one, what the hell are you doing here? Yeah. I mean, come on. Well, and you know what? You know what? Now, now you got me fired up, and I put a tweet in because this tweet is beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful. it's a post, by the way. Go ahead. X whatever. <laughs> uh, at, at this one belongs to the Reds. I uh, retweeted this. And I thought this was just great from at Cubs Girl Talk. Ooh, Reds Cubs Girl up. Talk. The Reds. The Reds finding a way to win the game in the late innings every single bleeping night is going to be a giant pain in the ass. You know what? That's the kind of tweets I live for. So. Oh, they 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 hate us because they ain't us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was watching. I was watching the Cubs game against the Rockies. Let me tell you. Oh man, it's like big wig, big contract guy after the next. And let me tell you, they're all boring. They're all boring. They don't have. Listen, Ellie De La Cruz might strike out every other at bat, but at least he's exciting. You can't say he's not. Can't say he's not. Shout out to Stuart Fairchild, by the way. I can't believe he's not on the rundown. So good, good kudos for you for 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 being a really neutral type guy there. But uh, I figured you'd have him on the rundown for his ex exquisite play today. He he is on the bottom bar for reaching base twice, but all right. I, I I left I left it at that. I left it at that. All right, and then uh, Nate says the Reds are all the way back. But Trace, give us a rant about the shift, please. I'll tell you what I think about the shift. I think we we got some data. We there's still, there's still some data out there. I'm sure the analytic community will let me know all about how the fact that we can't play in these small numbers. But I do know so far I've not seen a whole lot come out right. I've been waiting for those. BB bullets that are right to where they always hit the ball, but it, I've not seen it yet. So I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to play it cool because I do know yeah cool. I do know it's coming I do know it's coming I do know there's going to be at least one ball hit to where they're at because it's impossible for it not to at least happen a couple times throughout the year. Just saying. <laughs> By the way, I would love to add it to the shift tally, right? The, you know the double play shift tally, but there was no double plays tonight. Was just we're going to play our first base holding hands 
uh, CES was basically was was borrowing sunflower seeds out of the back of Espinal's pockets throughout each pitch, but I don't know. Worked out for him, didn't it? Carlton Van uh, Van Hoy said, we need to stop leaving Steer out when the young core is being talked about. Feels like he's always an afterthought. Yeah, that is. You know why that is, Carlton? It's because he doesn't do anything flashy. There's nothing about his game that makes you think like, wow, you know, like it's not super pretty in some capacity. But the guy just hits. And that's, you're right. At some point, he's got to be one of the main cogs of the, of the conversation. You know what's funny about all this? We said this last year, Nick. When we have all these young core guys that come up, inevitably, you knew in the back of your mind that there was going to be somebody, a part of this young core, that was going to end up being a dude that we never expected to be the dude. And we gave credit to all these other guys, like, oh, man, look. And I'm not, a, I'm not out on Ellie, okay? I'm not out on Ellie. But let's face it. Ellie is the face of this franchise, and he's not really, he's not really one of the main reasons so far that this team's been unbelievably successful over extended periods of time. But he's going to be the one where the kids come in with the fat heads. They're the ones that he's going to be wearing his jersey. But Spencer Steer, let's face it, like he's, He's been as consistent as you could ever ask of a young player. Sorry, I was just distracted looking at Stuart Fairchild's 429 at bat. Oh, here we go. It just it just jumped right. out on the, the the table there. You can't even you can't take this guy serious. You can't take him anywhere. He's like you try to take him to a nice dinner and Nick shows up with cargo pants. You know? Out here talking about Stuart Fairchild. I mean, listen, he had a pretty good game. Caught some fly balls, thought he did a good had a couple good at bats. Anton, what do you do with this guy? What do you do with Anton, though? We just did we just skip India? I mean, we talked about India. We talked. Oh, oh, you want to talk about Jonathan? He was on base three times tonight in the leadoff spot. uh, Can I say something? I want to hear you. I I'm ready. Where you hit in the lineup might matter, big boy. What do you think about that? (laughs) What do you think about that? Huh? I should have saw that. What do you think? Well, you think I mean, do you think we should move Jonathan into the six hole and just see how it plays out? Or do you think maybe just, I don't know, maybe maybe just keep him in the leadoff spot because, I don't know, he seems to hit there. <laughs> yeah. He no probably comment. actually is, is. He probably, I mean, with the personnel the Reds have right now, it, it does make sense to bat him lead off. Um, him or Benson. Benson feels like, man, this guy's going to, it feels like there's never going to be a game where Will Benson doesn't draw a walk. Right, I and mean, it just feels like he walks every night. But, but India, I mean, he had two walks tonight. He's, um, he's getting on base at a at, at a very high level. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just for a guy that was such an afterthought all all off season, uh, he's like leading off and getting on base every night and starting the rallies. And it's been it's been really cool to see. I, I was like here for the. I, I think I said it several times this off season. I was here for the Jonathan India revival in left field. Sure enough, it's been at second base, but I kind of got what I was what I was hoping for, just in a, a weird, twisted sort of way. Um, Zach, we appreciate you. Said the boys are back. Love you guys. We love you. I can't believe that there's many this many people in here on a uh, on a Monday night edition of a winning edition of Chatterbox Reds. We'll continue to find ways to win. I I, I truly believe that about this club. I really believe that you know they can win in a multitude of ways. The, the the unique thing is is that they've really not, in my opinion, got an got an excellent opportunity to utilize the biggest spark plug that they have in in, in Ellie. And, and it's not that Ellie's been playing terrible. It's just that he's not done the Ellie types of things that you've seen him do in the past yet. But Ellie's been solid. I mean, he just the swing and miss, the swing and miss is going to irritate a lot of people because ultimately, and I know Ellie's not on the rundown. We'll get to Anton in a minute. But Ellie's situation is. It's kind of feast or famine, right? It feels like it feels like when he when he struggles or or and or when he doesn't reach base, it's just strike. He's going to strike out, and that'll wear on you if you watch it enough. And I think that does wear on some people. But but Ellie, I mean, hell, what, what I don't know. You have his numbers right in front of you, but his his numbers are actually pretty solid outside of obviously swing and miss. He's he's got a two fifty average, six sixty nine OPS. So like he's not been bad. Did strike yeah. out four times tonight, but. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and also we also have to remember they two of the four games have been against left-handed starters, which we know 
Ellie's not going to be as good against. You're not going to face 50% of left-handed starters. You're going to face maybe about 25 to 30%. So it's been, I don't know, a little stacked, but also one of the left-handed starters is the worst, one of the worst pitchers in baseball. So I guess no. you can't go too far with that, but yeah, I'm not worried if, if that's a thing. I think I that there's going to be a it. debate in the not too far future about Ellie De La Cruz and switch hitting. I really do. I, I don't know when that's coming. I'm not. I'm not, and I'm not rooting for it, Nick. I don't. I don't, I don't want people to think that it's like, oh, I'm, I'm ready to go off the deep end right now. It's just becoming more and more apparent that you try to start working on lefty lefty. He's more comfortable. He just. He's just been so much more productive from the left side of the plate. His right-handed splits are. Pretty pretty bad. I know that it's in his, it's young. I'm gonna give it some time, but it feels like in the not too distant future we will have a discussion around the fact of hey maybe we just give up the whole right handed thing in general and we just continue to try to become better and better from the left handed side because that's one thing that nobody talks about is how much time, effort, energy you have to put in to your craft to be a switch hitter. So much so that Lance Berkman, that I know all of us Reds fans remember because he was a Reds killer, but the one, the craziest thing I've ever heard, uh, or I don't say ever, but it was a unique thing I heard when I listened to Lance Berkman talk about hitting. They asked him if there was anything that he would ever do over again in his career, and Lance Berkman immediately said he would not switch hit because he felt like he t- it took way too much time for him to try to be. It was two completely different swings. And it's like sometimes you could go a week without doing, you know, without basically swinging right handed. And then all of a sudden, when you do have to hit right handed, it could be in a huge spot and you haven't swung in a week. And you had some good points about it. Now, I'm not suggesting it can't, it can't be done, but just food for thought down the road um, with Ellie De La Cruz and switch hitting. TJ Antone, the story is unbelievable. And I continue to harp on that. I think that that shouldn't be overshadowed. He's got grit. The dude's the dude's made of nothing but just pure guts to get back to this spot where he's probably for many of us never thought a million years he'd get back. But this isn't a charity case. He's got to be good enough to be here. I don't think either one of us are in the camp that he's probably good enough to be here based off the options you have available to you. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't feel that <laughs> on I don't know. You shouldn't feel that that nervous about a four run lead, especially with where they were in the lineup as well. Uh, his his fastball velocity is down about three miles per hour towards whatever his like average is, according to Statcast. Um, I mean, look, they got through it tonight, so you know credit to him for finding a way. Um, really was battling it early, but it's just it's just hard to see how he's one of the Reds' best options, and he has options himself to where he can get sent down to AAA. You're not worried about losing a guy. And I just think Tony Santillan's a better option right now. And I, I hope we don't have to go through several games where it becomes crystal clear to everyone that he needs to go down for, for Tony Santillan. But I kind of fear that that could be coming. So, Yeah, I'm just looking at the box score right now. I mean, Philly's only got seven hits. Um it's a good. It's a good night. It's a good night from the from the arms. And I, I, I Antone, to be clear, it was dicey. It was very dicey. Uh, obviously, you couple that with his last outing, and you get the you get the thought and the sentiments that we have. But I just want to remind everybody. I'm going to try to be fair here. That the only run that he gave up was the Phantom Ghost Runner run. So. I know that's not a good stat. I know that's not a way to continue to go about it. But let's be semi fair here. He didn't give up. It's not like he gave up, you know, three runs and the Reds hung on and won six to five, although that was very close to happening. Um, that didn't happen. So shout out to TJ Antone. All right. For those that are wondering, we do this every single, after every single game, every single night. Um, and we continue to ask for you to come in, give a like to the stream because scientifically uh, it helps the Reds win the next day. Uh, also, we do have a game tomorrow pending weather nick what's next i gotta label my stuff better all right reds phillies game two tomorrow weather not looking um ideal uh in in philly tomorrow it's like a 90 percent chance of rain at game time uh but the phillies will have spencer turnbull on the mound 
Uh, Turnbull, it was a guy, he looked like a pitcher that was on the rise with the Tigers back in 2021. You might remember he threw a no-hitter. He actually had a 2.88 ERA over seven starts that year, but then he needed Tommy John surgery. Only ended up pitching a total of 13 games last year between AAA and the majors. Struggled at both levels. ERA over seven in the majors, over six um, at AAA. Uh, the Phillies, they took a shot on him. He's a guy with some upside that's, um, you know, kind of just hoping to revitalize his career. Signed him for a one-year deal, two million this offseason. Um, the only reason he's actually scheduled to start tomorrow, ironically, is because of rain. The Phillies were rained out on opening day. They would have had Jack Wheeler pitching tomorrow on normal rest, but they had to move him back a day. So that's why he ended up making the rotation. He was actually originally supposed to just be a long man. Uh, did have a good spring, though. He allowed just two runs over eight innings, struck out 12 batters, and only walked two in those eight innings. Um, Turnbull's only two career starts against the Reds came back in 2020. You might remember the Reds and the NL Central only played the AL Central. So that's why he had two starts that year. He had a 2.45 uh, ERA in those games. Santiago Espinal is the only Red that has faced Turnbull, though. He is 0 for 2. All right, for the Reds, Graham Ashcraft. Um, Ashcraft threw six shutout innings against the Phillies at GABP last year. Four hits, four walks, four Ks. That was his only career game against the Phillies. He's never pitched at Citizens Bank Park. Um, some notables, uh, Bohm is 1 for 1 with a double. Castellanos and Schwarber both 0 for 3 against him. Uh, Bryce Harper has never faced uh, Graham Ashcraft. And Ashcraft had a little bit of a shaky spring, 5.5, 2 ERA and 4 starts. Struggled with his command. He walked 8 batters in 14 and 2 thirds innings. Not very Graham Ashcraft-like. So, But, you know, kind of like uh, Trace, kind of like um, Andrew Abbott, Kind of comes in with maybe some some question marks into the start, but look, you got a chance. You go out and you shut down the Phillies. You've you've kind of you know proved everyone wrong. Yeah, I well, I feel great if if Graham Ashcraft's our fifth starter. I just do. I mean, yeah. I, I I get I get the concept that maybe he he might get lumped in depending on how the days fall. He might actually end up throwing against a guy you know a, a staff's ace, and in, and and in that case, maybe you don't feel as good. But a fifth starter, man, um, it's a unique situation. I don't know who ultimately ends up being, for lack of a better term, who ends up being the best arm on this staff at the end of this year. But I feel great with a capital G about Graham Ashcraft being the fifth guy. And uh, we'll see where it, ultimately, uh, where it ultimately leads. This is the part of the show where we have to do some things to make the chat happy. But also, it's a part of the deal. Go ahead. One one quick point. I mean, on on the fifth starter, uh, like the Phillies, this is a team that has a two hundred forty five million dollar payroll, and they had to throw Spencer Turnbull, and they only had one starting pitcher injury. They have Walker on the IL. They don't have the kind of starting pitching depth the Reds have. So payrolls are so are so not even. I mean, you can have a two hundred forty five million dollar payroll, but if it's on three or four guys. Um, where, where the Reds have that depth, Spencer Turnbull kind of feels like Luke Weaver of last year. Like it's literally just yep. throwing $2 million at a guy you're hoping and praying can do well, but there's no real reason or logic as to why he should for sure fit. So um, that that's kind of where I'm, I'm most hopeful of. I know the Reds offense has been really great so far, but I think that the starting pitching depth is the one thing that over the course of a season, when you have to go to that sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth starter in your system, that's where I think the Reds can really separate themselves from a lot of teams, not just in the NL Central, but in the NL overall. That's a fair point. Um, shout out RIP to Dreamweaver as well. Um, hope he's got to roll with the Yankees, though. Yeah. Got to roll with the Yankees in their bullpen. So. Hope he's doing well. Hope, hope he's doing well. I don't well. know why the Reds never tried that. Um, well, who knows? Sometimes they don't try things that you might think that they need to. I'm clearing the graphic because at this point, there's only one thing that's, that's, that needs to get done, and that is the reveal. How this ever became a thing, nobody knows, but sometimes wins equal the Nick Clage. Tuesday, Tuesday, in, Tuesday in Fenway. Yep, there was a Tuesday in Fenway, and somehow Nick Cage, and some pillow that Nick uh, possessed some capacity, he's told the story before. I love, what, a, what an excellent throw by you, by the way. Really, really nice. Um we need about uh, 86 more of those. I think that's the number. Get to 89 wins in this division, although it looks like the Pirates might never lose, so there's that. I'm going to 
they win the NL Central and I didn't take that plus 1,600, I'm going to, God, that's going to hurt. They're not going to win the NL Central, Nick. I'll tell you why. <laughs> because the Reds are going to win. That's why. All right. <laughs> Uh, the Pirates can't win. It's impossible. The Pirates can't win. Yeah, they got off to a hot start. They got off, they got off to a hot start last year. Let's not forget. Uh, but the Pirates, let's face it, they're a little bit better than everybody wants to act like they are. That's okay because at the end of the day, they are the Pirates, and they will ultimately find a way to be the Pirates at some point. All right, everybody. Uh, I can't begin to express to you how much me and Nick appreciate all of your kind words, thoughts, your comments as a reminder as a reminder, you must guess the score. Okay, you must guess the score um, tomorrow. And I'm going to have to add this in because I already thought about this halfway through my promo. You're going to have to. You're going to have to also add in a home run hitter as a tiebreaker because if there's like 900 people that guess the same score, I don't have that many tickets. It's just then I'd be lying to you. So add in a home run hitter the very next time that the Reds play. Your deal counts. All right. Um, they're also rallying for likes right now in the chat. If you don't mind, if you're new to the show, here's a big thing. You can hit the like button. It helps us out significantly. And I think they're going for 400 tonight. That's absurd. That is absurd. Just so everybody knows where we used to be and where we've been before. We've came from humble beginnings. But you know what? We remember the OGs. We used to rally the troops for 100. That was a big deal. The fact that we're going to rally the troops in game number four of the season for four hundo seems appropriate also last thing please be safe i know that uh, i'm not your parent uh, but at the same time we're supposed to have some really bad weather tomorrow please be safe we love you and uh just make sure you're you're not thinking that you're big being bigger than the you know maybe 40 to 50 mile an hour winds just saying all right this is the time of the show where i got to find the outro i think i found it and I got to figure out how to dunk a basketball. But I love you. I appreciate you. I'm going to do my best to make you proud. My very best. And I won't hurt myself tonight. That's a fact. See you tomorrow!